Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the rundown. I'm joined. I'm sorry for my demeanor. Uh, I'm a little pissed about some shit I can't necessarily talk about on main. But let's start today with a video from uh, that we were supposed to have last week, but due to technical issues, we weren't able to. So, shall we? Let's do it. Also, hey, everybody. I'm here. <laughs> he did it. He scoped out this play. I'm What's the most illegal thing you've ever done? My boy, he did it. He scoped out this play. I'm calling. I'm by name, Curtis. My boy, Curtis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Why? <laughs> you don't have to Why? do any of this. Why are you doing that? It's just your voice. We, Nobody knows who this is. He knows what he's is. Curtis, if you listen to this, it's your fault, man. <laughs> Curtis and Ralph. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So they plan out this house. Like, they're telling me, yeah, we scooped it out. We scooped it out and everything. So cool, cool. Like, easy, Wait, you quiet. can't hear shit? I don't even see it. <laughs> ah. Oh. I thought you were preparing the video. <laughs> there we go. Oh. I got it now. I'll restart it all 30 seconds in. Sorry to the listeners, but I apologize. What's the most illegal thing you've ever done? Sorry, my boy, he did it. He scoped out this play. I'm calling. I'm by name Curtis. My boy Curtis. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? <laughs> you don't have to Why? do any of this. Why are you doing that? It's just your voice. We, Nobody knows who he, this is. He knows what he's in. Curtis, if you listen to this, it's your fault, man. <laughs> Curtis and Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> So they plan out this house, like they're telling me, yeah, we scooped it out, we scoped it out, and everything. So cool, cool, like easy, quiet neighborhood, nobody there. I'm like, all right, whatever. But when we get there, we bring it to the house. Tell me why there was nothing but old alcohol, like wine, but all expired. I said, what is this? Cops coming. We ran. I, he hit the gate. I never seen the fat guy clear a gate, but he cleared it. I jumped, and I went through the gate, fell, and everybody's outside, like neighbors and all. So now we have cops and everything. So y'all robbed somebody and only got old liquor and then got caught. Yes, dude. This dude told me he scoped it out. It was he said, Yeah, they have TVs, game systems. So there wasn't one TV in the house. Not one. It looked like, it's like abandoned. It's like a Nah, yeah, fuck Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that nigga, bro. What the hell is he scoping out? What's the most illegal th Oh Lord. Great. Listen, if you're going to have yeah. the decency to, like, not check if there's, an, like, if there's, like, a nosy neighbor or some shit, at least make sure the house has some good shit in it. See, Evan, you are a, uh, what's it called, resourceful and uh, very observant motherfucker. I know it's ten minutes in, less than ten minutes in, so sorry, YouTube gods. However, you are a type of person I would commit a crime with. Those type of people, no. You don't do that. Nah. <laughs> the crime I commit is tax, is tax evasion. <laughs> I'm it. just saying, you would be the person that we go into like a heist crew. That's what I'm saying. Because um, I'm, I'm reliable enough to get the job done and I can keep my fucking mouth shut. And if shit pans out, it's going to pan out. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's. I, I, but here's the thing: it. I went, I went, I went to you know the, you know, unfortunate son school of, you know, criminal defense, which is plead the fifth, shut the fuck up. Like Literally. even if you know you did nothing wrong. Even if you know that you are just getting your like, but keep your mouth shut. I'm not sure if you remember these guys, but on Instagram, they're probably all over social media, or at least they used to be. Uh, it was like two lawyers that were hella stoner dudes. Shut the fuck up Friday. Like, shut the fuck up. Yep. Yep. Shut the fuck Those up Friday. No, because they're right. No, because they are right. That is a hundred percent. So, um, so uh, the 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 hardcore nerd community. For Fallout, by the way, just as an update from last week's episode, has uh, come to a consensus. The young guys, like myself, are like, okay, there. The, Todd Howard came out and said New Vegas was canon. Uh, the 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 things that are shown in the show are like aren't aren't as black and white as they may seem. 
We like it. I've watched two, uh, two and seven eighths of an one and seven eighths of an episode. I'm waiting for Meadow to get okay because the fucker stabbed a dog and she's not okay with that. Um, neither am I. Yeah, I know. But, but um, you you could tell Meadow this, and I'm gonna just spoil this a little bit. Dog meat doesn't die. He doesn't die. He stays okay. alive. Okay, cool. Um, regardless, um. Show show is pretty fucking great. It's pretty. Don't get me wrong. They definitely, you know, Hollywoodify some of the bullshit. I'm don't spoil it for here. me, but I have a prediction that Maximus was the person that put that razor blade in her boot. Uh, you'll find out who does it. I won't say anything. So it was him. Okay, because I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I mean, but... I interrogation scene like that was fucking no nah, that that was good TV. that was just patently good tv i think next I, I, th- like... I, I think i think the next season that they're gonna do with it is going to be episodic they're not gonna dump, dump it all in one go i don't think they were expecting it to be as popular as it was and but like there's people like my my uh, associate of mine yGO devil who is um when i do um who is someone who's an associate of, of mine he got his mom to watch it, and she's never nothing video games ever, and she was she was in love. So, well, I I, think I, I will say I, I'll I'll give credit where credit is due with it, the show too. It feels like Fallout. Thank you. That's all it, I wanted it, to hear. It, 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 no, it, no, I'm not saying. Oh no, be, make no mistake. My hangups were almost entirely with the lore shit, and that shit was like resolved. Um, it looks it looks like Fallout. I love their use of practical sets. Like that's the one thing like, I really, really appreciate is is that the practic the practical effects and the practical sets and the practical costumes and the and the in them cutting back on CGI at least or at the very least having CGI that's good enough that it feels realistic. All wonderful. I will say everything following uh, you know, that whole fight in Philly they flesh it out even more. Like it's really it's really fun. Uh, I, I just I'm find it so reaction. fucking funny that they decided to put a town where everybody's always fucking fighting and name it Philly with an F. Yeah. No, I no Elia said it first, actually. It was funny. Because I've yeah. never watched it with me. Yeah, no, that's great. Oh, I'm Lord. just happy to hear it. Because everybody was freaking out about the fucking New Vegas thing. Todd, uh... Yeah, so, so, th- thank God Todd came out and said that because, like, the only people that have hangups about the show now are the old guard. And when I say the old guard, I'm talking about the people that say Fallout One and Fallout Two are the best games in the franchise. Suck my dick. <laughs> and fuck uh, you, people. People who are still arguing about whether or not Fallout Tactics is fucking canon. It is. Dog, there's this fucking dude. There's uh, this guy in my comment section had me fucking. I I did a two times speed like response video in a short, like so I sounded like fucking Beepo Shabipo. Oh, it was awful. This guy, this guy. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. uh, I'm gonna show you, and I'll show the audience the fucking uh, comment and question that he that that he uh, did the shit on. So the um I made a video called What What Fallout Game Should I Play After Watching the TV Show? Mm-hmm. Oh, this guy was this guy was fucking he, I'll I'll read it out to you for for everybody to see. Uh what the fuck? First, Fallout one. Second, Fallout Resurrection 1.5. Third, Fallout 2. Fourth, Fallout Nevada. Fifth, Fallout New Vegas. By the way, Fallout Resurrection in in uh I think in Fallout Nevada. Uh, are mods. Yeah, I was going to well. say. I don't, now, granted, I advocated again. people to play Tale of Two Wastelands. Because you get the atmosphere and the feel of Fallout with Fallout 3 and the world building of that and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and like the atmosphere of it is better than basically the atmosphere of any other Fallout game. But then if you want like the meaty RPG in the same save file, you can just go to New Vegas. Oh, okay. That's all in the dope. same save file. And then he says... Six Fallout Three and Tale of two, two. After that, you can go with the rest. The trash, the thrash. <laughs> it's 
it's everything else is absolutely wrong advice. You can add Fallout Senora somewhere after New Vegas. I respect your content and your time, but I will disagree with it and dislike it for good reason. And then somebody uh, well, said, gatekeeping level 300 with this comment. And then he says, 9,000, not 300. And I'm like, I had to go, and I made a short reply because I had to go beepo shipipo mode because 60 seconds wasn't enough. Yeah, I think, now, I'll be honest. I feel like I was a part of the old guard when Fallout 76 came out. And no, you, the old no, the old guard was very, very much like I'm talking about explain, like the nineties. Let me factors, explain yeah. to you, no no no. Let me explain to you what I mean. I mean that Fallout is a single player game. Fallout is not supposed to have multiplayer, that whole thing. And mm-hmm. I think when it first came out, those arguments were valid because it was not a good game on release. Don't no. get me wrong, it had the bare bones of what needed to be done, but it wasn't there. No, it wasn't. and then they updated and updated and i'm a big uh believer in cyberpunk 2077 you know and you're a big believer in uh no man's sky so we both believe in games being able to come around that curve and actually being good if a game I has don't... good bones and and it could be debated whether or not fallout 76 has good bones i think that like the game itself is perfectly fine in that regard its biggest struggle is the engine it's built on like if it played like if it would play as smoothly as like a Fallout Four, then yeah, it'd be fine. But it doesn't. It it's the rubber banding of the effect of it is rough, and I really wish that they would release an offline mode to play. There's not like, an offline yet. That's crazy. No. Here's the thing. You know how they could do it? They could um uh make you connect to the internet to log into the game. You have to maintain that login connection, but everything else is just done in the world, and all it's doing is just checking if there's any type of like other like service that's like fucking with the game in real time. So it's like contained. It's just all everything you need is hosted on the fucking like uh, client side. Mm, I got that. But, you know, it's but to your point, like, it's the same reason why, like, I don't have faith in a game like um, Starfield. Uh Because Starfield is not, I think, has aspects of it that are excellent and addictive in the way that Bethesda games are. The problem is, is is that you're constantly jerked out of that by having to deal with these with systems that are just unfucking fun and un just not good to deal with yeah i finally gave it a good long chance off of game pass and uh i got to the second world where after you leave the first one you go land on the second one before you even talk to anybody important i was literally like i'm not enjoying this and i can't tell you what it was it just wasn't for me every single time i had to be in space and maneuver and like I hated two things. I liked the idea of like flying up to like things and docking and fighting and doing all that and being a pirate. I like the idea of like the the, the dock. It's just the actual mechanics of the um, space combat was not enjoyable to me. But you know what? I could get over that because I don't like space combat in general. I don't like it in No Man's Sky either. There's a reason why I like souped, I have a souped up S rank thing with all the maxed out shit so I could just curb stomp everything and not have to fucking try the biggest problem for me is the fast travel system yeah the not really being able to explore as much as you want having to fast travel to one location there to me is no point to just touch down on a planet just to explore which sucks second um any anything that is procedurally generated There's a range. If it's a stru- man-made structure or something, that's one thing. But if it's like a, it's a bunch of caves, it's awful. Is, the, that, the, what, is that how the maps on Starfield are? Procedurally mm-hmm. generated? All of, the, all of the maps are procedurally generated except for the handcrafted components and settlements and stuff like that. Now, the handcrafted components, like always, are stellar. And they feel good, and they give you that fantasy... 
And I like the idea of a new game plus in the sense of like, because I don't know if you know that Starfield has a new game plus. Yeah, I know. It's different universes. Sorry, spoiler, everybody. I didn't know that, but whatever. Um, basically, but so yeah, but basically in a nutshell, it's, um, you know, the things that feel really great about Starfield are the handcrafted components of it. Everything that's, that's procedurally generated is kind of ass. And like, you could, you could see this on a certain level with, um, you know, Skyrim, right? Like the bet, what are the best parts of Skyrim? All of the handcrafted components. What what was kind of cheeks the radiant day the radiant quests, you know like the things that just like pick a place pick an item out of a pool, make a quest and go do that. That's fine, you know maybe like it's cool with like the Dark Brotherhood forever where it just picks a random non essential NPC or some shit that you can go merc. But you know at the but end of the day, but it makes me think. It makes me think everybody is drinking uh, Jonestown fucking uh, Kool Aid because I'm like yo. What is everybody's favorite part in Fallout and Skyrim? And I'm sorry, Elder Scrolls. Walking around and exploring. Why would you take that away? That is what people expect. Everything out of in the game, everything in the Beth in Bethesda games, is built to foster that exploration and just figure and like exploring shit and trying shit out. And except for Starfield. <laughs> except for Starfield, because Todd Howard wanted. Do they wanted a lot of fucking planets and all that thing? And I, you know what I would have fucking taken? I would have taken. And hear me out. I would have taken a game roughly the size of Skyrim, except the different pro, uh, the different holds are on di are just parts of different planets, and and the and the rest of the planet can be procedurally generated. In the same way that it functions right now. You know, it's like you have, you know, at the end of the day, it really is just like, it didn't need to be a thousand planets. It just needed to be like five or six good ones with lots of stuff built in them. You know, if they could, if, if somebody, and the thing is, we're not even in a mod that just condenses the entirety of the game down to like a handful of planets and systems well like this is what i've always the, the mod see the mods see, nobody wants to mod starfield because they say it's fucking boring well again this is what i've felt since fucking the release of minecraft i don't think people actually genuinely want limitless possibilities because at a certain point you just become bored you don't get more creative as you continue to play the same experience and do the same things over and over and over again. And even if you're, you know, breaking out of the original mold and actually doing shit that is, you know, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, whatever it is, after a while, you're still just placing blocks. You're still just killing enemies. I feel like there is too much of an emphasis on trying to make everything you know, so massive that we can't even comprehend it because most of us won't even make 25%. All right. So that's why that, and that's a good, and that's a good segue. Like how world recently has, has put, done an update, right? I haven't had a chance to like hop back into it yet. I've been preoccupied with other, with other like little projects and stuff. When did the update release? Cause I'm just trying to figure out if I played it or not. Um, I could tell you. Uh, the la the Pal World release, um, that released uh sometime last week. Uh, okay, here no, I haven't played it. No, me yeah, me either. So here I can actually pull up the uh oops, oh, Sonatica's on on sale too. Um, no, I can I can pull it up for you here. Uh, sure. Pal World, Pal World, Pal World. Couple of really great things. Uh, dedicated server I know path. they're doing arena battles, right? Almost like Pokemon battles, but you fight alongside the people. Yeah, yeah, they're doing. Um, they did a teaser for it. Um, uh, a couple of the uh, um, updates and stuff that they had done. Um, is uh, they added a raid boss. Okay. Um, with different levels and things of that nature. 
They added training annual items, so you can now give experience to your pals, these drop-in dungeons. Um, they, have, they added ancient technical manuals, which give you ancient technology points. They added recovery meds, which allow you to slowly recover your HP over time. They added the Homeward Thundercloud, which allows you to teleport you to your nearest base. They added Ability Glasses, which, while equipped, you can see a pal's stats before you catch them. Mm. They added a new passive called Mercy Hit, where pals with this passive cannot reduce enemies' HP below 1 when attacking. Hmm. Okay. Kelpsy now produce pal fluids on a ranch. Dumond can now produce high-quality pal oil at a ranch. You can now reduce the weight of metal ore while riding a Serpent Terra. Increase the amount of ore dropped while riding Astagon. You can now raise up pal's rank to the maximal with a single synthesis using the pal essence condenser. Condensed in progress is now accumulated in individual pals. Negative pal statuses will now be resolved after spending some time in the pal box. Quality life updates. And, like and, and and it keeps going and going and going. I'm not going to go through all of it here, but like, Please you know, at the <laughs> you know at the end of the day, like, Pal World is itself like not necessarily a randomly generated thing. It's handcrafted. At least the base world is. And um, they also added an ore. Uh, they also added an ore mining spot that you can build. Oh, nice. Yeah, which nice. is he, which I, as a higher level player, I am building. Immediately, because I need it. I need that. But um, by and large, at the end of the day, you know, I was, I've been talking about this a little bit on new on Nerd News, um, which is another podcast that those listening can go catch us on. Um, you can go check out check that out at himedia.gg slash Nerd News. Um, listen to it on the app. I get an extra ten percent. Uh. At, uh, boost in ad revenue when you listen to it through the app. Um, games today, like the forty dollar and below price range, is really where like a lot of excellent, high quality, and rewarding experiences are at. I'm sorry, Meadow and I ha- I haven't I haven't slept. I've been going to bed at like two in the morning for the last two days, and I haven't taken a nap today, so I'm fucking. Dying. <laughs> oh, I'm up since yesterday, so I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. But yeah, it's just start like this, like like. Don't get me wrong. Like the stories of Bethesda games have always been in service to the exploration of the world, to the next set piece. You know. Yeah, but I I gotta be so real with you. Outside of things like Spider Man, uh, I'm only naming games that I played recently, so don't get mad. Uh, Spider Man, uh, Jedi, uh, Fallen Survivor, all uh, Armored Core Six. Uh, I you played Armored and- Core Six? How was that? I fucking love that game. I know it's not your style, but I would urge you to play it. If nothing else, the visuals are beautiful. It's a gorgeous game. Mm. And it's nothing like other FromSoft games, which I really fucking appreciate. But you will rage at some of these bosses if you get it. So just be aware. Um, I'm noticing that like outside of the AAA developers that everybody trusts with their life, undoubtedly, Insomniac Games, fucking... Uh, Bungie prior to uh, you know the Destiny fucking uh, money grab uh, all these other trusted fucking gaming things everything coming out $70, $80 now did you see Star Wars Outlaws? I heard that it was just a $70 game with a lot of microtransactions and not worth the time nope, wrong uh, Star Wars Outlaws coming out this year, coming out I think September or August. It looks like a great Star Wars game, but you want to know how much the digital del- deluxe and digital ultimate edition cost? At least a hundred dollars. So the basic is seventy, where you just get the game. Gross. Continue. The digital deluxe upgrade 
just the, the, the deluxe, not ultimate, is $110, Evan. And the ultimate edition is $130. What the fuck is going on nowadays? Because I don't know. The line must go up. Gaming is already one of the most profitable uh, media like divisions in the world. Gaming makes more than movies, TV, and music combined. But if you're not putting out a Baldur's Gate, Spider-Man, uh, God of War, you know, shit that people, uh, Red Dead Redemption, GTA, a fucking game that we've been playing for over 10 goddamn years. If you're not making those types of experiences, I'm not even talking about big AAA titles, because look at Helldivers, and look at fucking Power World, and look at Lethal Company. How come those games are able to get the care are able to get the uh, support from fans and the fucking creators alike, and there's no, uh, you know, public meltdown over the uh, outcry that more games need to be m more so like Hell Divers or more so like Power World than fucking Kill the Justice League. Because that's what I'm not understanding. But that's the trend. That's the direction we're moving. Because by and large, games like Kill the Justice League are an exception and not the norm in the sense that games that are $70 and are pay to win slog fests and in, in with microtransactions and grindy bullshit, they sell in, in enough quantities and enough people pay for the microtransactions that it's worth it. Oh, I know. Microtransactions are literally more than 50% of gaming sales. That's why microtransactions will never go away from gaming. But if you notice, a lot, all of the games that ha that do do really well either don't have microtransactions in the case of uh, Content Warning, Lethal Company, Oh Dear, and Pow World. And if they do, they are respectful. They are they are very much optional to the point where it is not going to be in, like like you if you have to spend money on this. You either don't play the game enough or you just don't give a shit. Or you're just buying it for cos cosmetic reasons. Because, like, well, no, the progression, like... the, no, progression and stuff is locked up in the war bonds in Helldivers. But you, but in to get a new war bond, you gotta spend like a thousand credits. But you get like, if you like just explore a tiny bit at each mission, you'll get like 15 credits a piece. And after like, a week of like a play session of, of like playing for a few hours every night a week or two of playing a few hours every night voila you can now pay for the for the war bond yeah which more which so what I... yeah Go which ahead. and also the war for... bond is also by the way the war bond that you can buy that is it's ten dollars well, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying things like uh, take Street Fighter, for example. They have mm -hmm. battle passes almost every month, but it is strictly, uh, you know, cosmetic items. Nothing to help you in game, literally just to change how your character looks. And if you love the game that fucking much, you should spend the money on a microtransaction. I'm not against microtransactions. I'm just saying, why are we creating games that is not an experience of itself? that is uh, being marketed with something that you don't get at launch as something to buy now. Pause real quick. So unpaused, um, we just had a whole conversation separate that had to happen for other reasons. Um, I think we were talking about Fallout 7. You were talking about Fallout 76. You now it started as like a mid-game and we were talking about no, no, no. we were on to other stuff it's okay let's just new combo <laughs> sorry for if I, sorry if ever anybody feels uh unsatisfied but we literally just were talking for like a half like, like half like 15 minutes half hour about some heavy shit so uh, and you could take a drill to my brain. I still wouldn't remember what the fuck it was we were talking about. <laughs> I want to talk about the uh, the uh, Adeptus Custodes. What's Do you that? know what Warhammer is, Brian? Yes. Do you know what Warhammer 40k is? Yes. Do you know that this past week, Games Workshop said 
There has always been female custodies. They played the same game I played. Yeah. So, to be clear, for lore reasons, there is really no reason why there couldn't be a, a, a female custodies. And because... Which one wanted... the custodies? Because the, the, the gold the the, the 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 gold ones that are about six inches shorter than pr- the Primarchs, the sons of God, and they're these are the ones that are just on Terra and they're stronger than the Space Marines. My whole thing is, from a lore perspective, it makes sense. There's there there really isn't any reason why female custodies shouldn't exist. Female Space Marines might have been a harder sell. All things considered, but that, that that's what I thought we were talking about. No, so custodies like, are like the, the above them. Custodies are above them. Custodies are made in fucking test tubes, dude. Like I they're don't know made shit about Warhammer. I hope you know this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know of it. But the reason we're talking about it is because like the chuds the fandom is are losing crazy. their mind. Well, here's the thing: Warhammer has gotten pretty fucking large over the last few years, especially in the wake of the pandemic, when people were really yeah. But I can't be the too. I can't be the only one who looks at that fucking fandom and doesn't think toxic masculinity. No fault of their own. No, no, make no mistake. Games Workshop last year had to put out a statement saying, "Hey." The Imperium is about hate, war, and hatred. Warhammer is not. Fascists are not welcome in our thing. Bigots are not welcome. And the reason why they're doing this is because there's a lot of like a lot of new people have gotten into the fandom. Lots of new people. Lots of new people that aren't just thirty something year old white men. Who play younger with people? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Call it what the fuck it is. Because here's the thing. I'm interested in Warhammer. I will would if I had the money, I'd go buy a fucking, you know, kill squad pack and I'd paint that shit for fun. A hundred percent. I'd do that. And if you said you're playing with dolls, damn fucking right. Look at this shit I painted, I put it on a shelf. You know, and I don't want to fucking you know, so but like I'm not so insecure that you can say that and it's an issue. Yeah, you'll start crying. Uh, <laughs> some some men are. And the fact of the matter is, is that like there's they put out a short story of like with the first, with like the first like on record female custodies, and like they're, and here's the thing they say, oh it's a retcon, it's a retcon. They've retconned this shit three hundred and seventy four times since like last weekend. So I don't I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> like they've retconned this shit all the fucking time. Yeah, but not not to defend these idiots because they're fucking stupid. But I will say if you have. 20 plus years of all your, you know, entries in your universe or whatever, the fucking books, the fucking games, whatever it is. And not once you've seen a bitch, you can't sit there and tell me that they've been there the whole time. Like, there's not one story. <laughs> well, you want to know why they originally, they, they were actually talking about it. Um, do you want to know why uh, back in the uh, 90s they were saying, why do we make female custodies? Is because some fucking executive was like, we already have all the models made. We're not printing them with boobs. And the thing is, is, is that like armor with boobs and shit, the only like those don't really like exist anymore. The ones that do is like the Adeptus Sororitas, but they're like warrior nuns and it's kind of part of their aesthetic and it's kind of fucking rad. Um the there's really no reason like like the only reason like you would know that the only way you would know that a uh, um custodies like have a, like are are the stories written about them and just because and the thing is is that the way that the lore and the stories and stuff in Warhammer work is it's a living history it is the the the, the stories of this world are forty thousand years old. There are innumerable stories, innumerable things all over space time with here that just are the are 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 there custodies are there are are some of the custodies women sure because the thing because you know why not because they haven't fucking talked about them and also like my thing is that here's the thing I am if nothing else a gigantic lore nerd 
And there are certain things, that, there are certain lore things that are set in stone, and there are certain lore things that are not. And there are things, certain quick, things that are I ambiguous. Just, I, just, so I just want to tell you, go I, for it. just very quickly, uh, I think you fucked up because you talked to the wrong person about this. I genuinely could not care less about the lore. I just want to play Space Marine 2 because that shit looks fucking fire. Yeah. And it, it got it, delayed. It, it, it does look fun. <laughs> oh, it got delayed? How? You know what you should play? You know what you would, I think you would hold you over? Hmm. Bolt gun. No. I really? I have no interest in it whatsoever. Really? Unless it's something like Hades or fucking uh, Dead Cells. I'm not really into the that type of game. Like, I wish I was. Is it on Game Pass? Probably. Let's see. I check and give it a shot just for funsies. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Like if I mean, it's on if it's on Game Pass, you might as well fucking try. It'll hold you over till you get Space Marine. Oh, and I should tell you this. So, uh, f- just to go back to Fallout for a second, Fallout Four is like five bucks on fucking PlayStation right now. Go get it if you don't already own it. Oh, I brought it. You're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> they actually just released some new content too to it, which um should be yeah, pretty and, cool. Uh, next next gen update. Two. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to go. try. I actually, kind of, I actually was thinking about maybe going back and doing a Fallout Four playthrough and actually, like, actually, like, playing it for real this time and just doing the, I don't know, just man. spending a disgusting amount of hours with it and having fun. I just don't feel like it has. Uh, what's it called? There's a problem with games and keeping longevity with the player, at least with me. Like, I have such a hard time playing, and I don't understand it. Because, like, Armored Core 6, perfect example. I'll play the same fucking mission a million times to get enough fucking money to buy every fucking piece of goddamn leg, gun, fucking uh, middle part, whatever the fuck it is. Right. And then I'll play something like Fallout 4, and once I get past the fucking uh, Diamond City, I'm like, oh, what the fuck do I do? Nah. You get what I'm saying? You fall. I mean, like you Not have a very, you, you have a, you have a solid goal, but then like it just opens up a little too much, and you're just like all of these fucking quests in the quest log. You're like, what the fuck do I do now? I don't want to go. F- I have to go all the way over there, and there's no faster. I, wish- I don't want to fucking go all the way over there. It's like the fucking uh, yeah. It's, I I understand what you mean. There gets to be a point in the game where you're where you just kind of hit like. A limbo, and you're like, "What the fuck do I do?" And then at a certain point, like it kind of recondenses, and you're kind of like get on the straight and narrow again once you get past it. And then after that is usually like the end game. Skyrim's like that for me. Like between the levels of like thirty and like forty five, where I'm like in the middle of like multiple different quest lines for multiple different guilds. And like multiple different things are going on, and my quest log is bleh, and there's so much shit, and it's just like I'm just over fucking whelmed with options. And eventually, like I get, I, I you know, I start knocking shit out. I finish this storyline. I finish this storyline. I finish this quest line. I finish this guild, that guild, and then it just like it just kind of like all comes together. It's something that like. Like, I don't know what it is. It's like being in that moment, like that that area of a Bethesda game, it feels good and bad at the same time. It feels like, oh, I'm really like into this. Like there's so many options and I'm like trying this. And I'm like, oh, but what the fuck's over there? And you just get longer and longer and longer. And then you just like your quest, your quest list is like yelling at you. Like is it is sitting in the back of your mind? Like as you're exploring this random fucking dungeon. Do you want to another go settlement? A, a ne- <laughs> another settlement needs your help. Yeah, man. It and I'm and it's really weird because I'm getting to the point where I think I just value uh, games that respect your time. Yeah, because like you remember Assassin's. Do you remember Assassin's Creed Two? I didn't play? get. I didn't the I didn't get onto the Assassin's Creed until Revelations. 
Okay. Well, like, and, the and then I played I like, a, and then I played like a fifth of three. I played like a fifth of Black Flags, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, the reason I say AC two is because in that game they had a collectible and it was feathers, and I said fuck the goddamn feathers. Those feathers are pieces of shit. They fucking run away when you try to get them. And you can't. Even, you have to buy fucking maps just to get them. But you know what the fuck I did collect? The goddamn pieces of Eden, so I could get that fucking Altair goddamn armor. And you bet your nigga at fucking eight, nine, ten, however old I was, fucking got that armor because it's like hey. That's the fucking uh, Mount Olympus. That's where you're trying to get to. You know, I don't need fucking 50 million pages of the same fucking book so I could actually read the book all together. What the fuck are you talking to me about? <laughs> yeah. And also, is it too much to ask for fucking games to just do a Dragon Ball Z-esque goddamn recap? That's all I want. That's all I fucking want. I took like a nine month hiatus on uh, Jedi Survivor, the first game. And when I came back, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I don't know where I am. I don't know where to go. I don't know what's happening. What do I do? Also, it's a soul boardy type of game, right? Yeah. yeah. So I had yeah. to learn the fucking learning curve all over again. And I was like, fuck my ass. Pro tip, pro tip. If you rage quit a soul boardy type game and come back to it later, just start over. I promise you. I promise you it'll it'll be less frustrating and more rewarding. I, I stepped away from Sekiro for like a month. And I got much further than I did the last time. And I hopped back into it yesterday. And I just kept getting my fucking ass beat. And I well, was Sekiro making... was also like one of the hardest fucking ones. The hard part about it is learning how to parry. Once you parry, it becomes a cakewalk. Problem is, is that you've got it. You, it's you. Tr you're training your brain, and I don't really get parrying that much. I think it's. I. I think the brain. The brain drain was like lesser because I was playing a lot of Lies of P consistently. Which, by the way, for everybody watching, Lies of P is one of the best video games that I have played. In the Soulsborne genre, the only thing better than it, in my personal opinion, is probably fucking Elden Ring, because it's Elden Ring, for fuck's sake, so. But even then, the, the gameplay, easy. even then, the actual, like, combat flow and gameplay of combat in uh, Lies of P is better than Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Yeah, at the end of the day, gaming's kind of fucked. Um, we're, uh... I think what's probably going to end up happening is is that we're going to see the double A industry kind of booming. You know, I, I think we're going to see pub, like game like like we're going to see a lot of studios that very much um uh are do well without a publishers. Independent studios are going to do quite well. From Soft is a good example of this, um, or at least ones with hands off publishers like From Soft. Uh, Bal uh, Larian Studios is another one. There, there, they don't have a publisher. Their hands off. You're gonna. Um, yeah, but they fumbled. They fumbled their shit so bad. How so? Not allowing, not doing anything for Borders Gate Three post launch. Um, outside of obvious patches and shit. I'm saying expansions or anything. And then to also they, not they, do anything. They've been they've been hinting that they weren't gonna that Baldur's Gate Three was going to be its own cohesive thing and not gonna have anything else. Which don't get me wrong. I, they made more money than you and I could dream of. Um, they they made enough money that every single employee of Larian Studios could go buy three islands. They made probably more, they made more money than fucking No Man's Sky did in Hello Games. They're fine money wise. The thing is though oh, is, is that they they just the consensus was is that the people working on the game didn't want to fucking work on Baldur's Gate anymore. They done it. They were they were still patching it. Like they don't want to make anything new again. Um, they want to work on other projects. And we're and here's the thing: the next thing that bald that fucking Larian puts out is probably going to be another Divinity Original Sin or something akin to it. It's probably going to be something in Pathfinder. Um, and that's fine. And 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 when it comes out, I will probably play it because I because I want to 
I want to have sex with weirdly colored elven women, you know, it, it, in game. So, yeah, but us as I'm, I'm just saying us as consumers, we lose because there is an example of a great game made by a great studio who takes the time and the uh, allotment of resources that is actually needed and it benefited them very well. It just doesn't. They, 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 they also Frost. lost a, 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 they also lost a quarter of their team the team that helped make that game they lost the lore masters and the are and the people and the in the in the in the, in the, in the art directors and the designers at wizards of the coast because well, hasbro that's... laid them all the fuck off well that's Dude. the thing like rocksteady to just to bring it back to to kill the justice league for a second the reason that that game is so ass is because everybody from the fucking Batman Arkham games is gone. Long gone. Like, over 10 years, they are no longer fucking employees, which is crazy to think about. But it's like, yo, you are a legendary studio. You gave you gave birth, pretty much, to the modern-day superhero fucking video games. How did you fumble the bag that fucking badly? You, Ship of you Thesis. made this. Ship of Theseus. It's a shit Theseus thing. I'm just saying, like, I don't understand if it is just great talent, how it doesn't seem like a game studio can get talent onto the fucking business side of the shit. Because that would be my first guess. Well, it's because it's 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 for a couple reasons, right? Right? Blizzard back in the day, before the Activision takeover, for all their fucking problems, obviously. Like the interpersonal mm. issues and shit. Developers ran the business. Like, the people who were in charge of the business were developers or people with development background. It's why is, why is Boeing currently in the shitter right now just to go into current events? It's because Boeing is run by marketers, business people. When before their merger back in the 70s, they were run by the engineers. The engineers understand the importance of a high, you know, quality you know, of, 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 of investing in talent, and they understand the importance of making sure that that talent is, is being held to a high standard. When you have business people whose who's only concern is short-term current quarterly gains, Everything else is willing to be sacrificed, and when you have, and when talent is the only, and and, 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 and and people are the only reason you are able to make these fantastic experiences, when a Bobby Kotick is like, you know, paying like doing shit like, you walk in this room, like everybody, one two one two as you're walking into the building. And then everybody is a one goes over here and you go sit at your desks and over here, go over there to that room. you all get fired and doing shit like that. Right. Like functionally at the end of the day, um, the problem is ultimately that unless the P unless, unless the people who make the final decisions are, de are, are the people are, have a background in the shit that's being done. The business is going to have a long, slow, arduous decline unless they fix their shit. Blizzard used to be one of the best video game studios in the world. Boeing used to be used to used to have something like eighty percent of the world's market share for you know commercial aircraft. But when you let dickhead Nepo, Nepo babies with a marketing degree come in and run shit. Don't be surprised when they when they run it in the ground because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. All they're able to do is cut costs. All they're able to do is make a balance sheet look good. And while, yes, that might work in the short term, at the end of the day, all that's going to be left is a bunch of shitty products, uh, a, a crippled business, and uh, a, a and, wis and wistful remembrances of what used to be. Mm -hmm. True. I guess <laughs> we're living through it. Yeah, we are certainly living through it. Um, yeah. Give me money at hibmedia.gg/tip. 
and go follow Brian at its uh, under uh, its underscore or um, nope. at Bri- no no uh, oh sorry I was thinking I, I was mixing you and Sean up uh, go follow okay. Brian at Instagram dot com slash Brian uh, under that no dot two at no dot two underscore Brian I'm sorry I'm very tired I, I'm good. I'm tweaking uh, <laughs> links in the description we we're we here stick around for a little don't bit forget, Brian. We'll, we'll chit chat a bit after the recording but don't forget to kiss your mother I don't understand that reference. I'm saying it to the audience. Maybe a hug is okay if you don't feel comfortable being a grown-ass adult kissing your mother on the lips. Kiss your mama, little baby boy. I know for, I know for a shit you'd fight me if I if I gave you that same advice. I kiss her. Doesn't make her any less of a bitch though. You said it. I know, and I meant it too. That's one. Anyhow, I'll catch y'all later. Have a good one. Love you, man.